In today's Roll for Crit episode, we're here to announce the universe is coming to an end in this board game. In Chaosmos, the universe is coming to an end, but it will be reborn. And if you're lucky enough to find the sacred Ovoid, you will be able to remake the universe in your own image. Yeah, each player is gonna be in control of a representative from a completely unique alien race from the far reaches of the universe slash galaxy slash however far it extends, <laughs> I'm not sure exactly. And you're hunting for that ovoid. It's gonna be hidden somewhere on one of these planets or maybe even in somebody's hand, a specific player. So on your turn, each player is going to have three actions that they can spend as they see fit. You have a little figurine, you can move around the board. That's your first action. You can move by connecting to these little stars or these planets. You jump around how you see fit. You could also spend one of these hyperspace tokens. You only start with three though, so be careful. And they will take you anywhere you wanna go. So you could just work over there. There are even these wormholes. So that will link you to other parts of the board. Sometimes there's asteroid fields. You can't cross those. So there's a little bit of a difference depending on how your board is set up exactly. Now, another very important aspect of the game is looking through those envelopes. Each planet has their own and that is where the cards are gonna be hidden. To start off with all the cards, whether it be in people's hands or on those planets. To look through an envelope, you have to be in control of a planet. So that's an action to take. You actually put a little flag down and that means you have control of it or had control of it last. When you're in control of a planet, you get to keep that envelope in front of you and it is yours to look through as you please. So you open it up, Right now, this is totally fine. You take those out and just for you, it's a secret to you, you get to look at these and you can exchange these cards between the cards in your hand uh, or add new ones to the envelope from your hand because you have a max hand limit of seven, whatever you want to do and then put them back and that's your business and no one else's. However, some envelopes might pose more of a threat. So let's say I went over here to Jagladak <laughs> and I want to take a look at what's going on in there. Well there's a card face up on the top. The only reason that happens is if it's a trap or a vault. The traps are really dangerous. What that means is you gotta do whatever this card says, unless you have some way to cancel it perhaps, and then you don't get to look at the rest of the cards in here anymore. Usually they might send you to another planet. Sometimes there's a vault. Those require a key card for you to be able to look through it. So a lot of times other players will put those traps out because they wanna hide something valuable in there, maybe the ovoid itself, or maybe they just want don't need to think there's something valuable in there and they're trying to bluff their way out of it. Indeed, these envelopes can hold many dangers as well as treasures, but that doesn't mean the board doesn't have its own dangers. Each planet can be toxic to a specific alien tribe. It's actually versed with whatever the home planet is. For example, the green alien race here is actually has the planet for the black alien race is actually toxic for them and vice versa. So they're gonna need actually a specific card that gives them, it's an environmental gear to protect them if they wanna interact with that planet. Another large threat is, well, the other players. In this game, there'll be a lot of times when they may go there first and take control of it, and if you really want to look at that envelope and they're, they're the ones who have it, you're gonna have to fight them for it. To do so, you're gonna have to be on the same space as them, and then you're gonna roll these dice. So you'll give them a quick roll, like so. Now, there is this symbol, this is a mirror symbol, and it will reflect whatever the other die is. If you roll both mirrors, that's an instant win. So you can really hope for that critical hit. Now, either way, you're gonna, if it's not the critical hit, you're gonna take those numbers, and then, starting with whoever has the lowest value, are gonna play attack cards. Now, they're gonna play from their hand, they have different symbols, like that, and they add to the value. Once they beat your value, and, or dec and decide to stop, then the other player has to go back and forth. Now, you can't just play these cards willy-nilly. There is actually some thought to it. For example, the Ion Grenade here is a one-time, so you really wanna make sure you use that when you wanna use it. In addition, some cards will actually say, if an opponent plays an imp card, negate that bonus and gain a bonus yourself. So you'll have to really be careful about that. Finally, this card, for example, while it's an attack card, that symbol means it's for that tribe. If you play that card against the blue player, we don't have the field right now, luckily, they would actually get a penalty. So you really do wanna be careful. You can't just play as much numbers as you want. You wanna make sure you're playing against the right player. Whoever wins can either choose to A, send their opponent home, or look at their opponent's hand, which just becomes really important. For example, right now, let's say Jonathan beat me, regardless of attack or defense. I have the ovoid in my hand right now. If he looks, he's like, I'm gonna take that ovoid. Yeah, I can steal one card from his hand, which is a big deal. <laughs> so that's one reason why you always won't wanna carry the ovoid around with you. Of course, if I won here, for example, I get to get free control of that planet, which of course could contain a trap. 
So there is some fun mind games you can do with that, like purposely lose to a planet in order to uh, trap them and send them back anyways. Yeah, there's a lot of that going on. The head games of, did he, does he have the opioid? I thought, I, maybe I saw him have it a couple rounds ago, but I couldn't take it for some reason. And uh, maybe, I, maybe he left it on this planet or maybe hit it somewhere else and stashed it. A lot of that. Well, uh, this is where those flags become handy because, for example, let's say I was running around you thought I had to avoid, you're like, okay, he's been to those three planets I know. Yeah, that's a nice reminder. But of course, if someone else, if I go in and take that control of that later, that flag is removed. So you don't have a perfect knowledge of who controls what throughout the game, but you can kind of get a sense of the most recent moves everyone's been making. The one big thing I want to mention is there's no deck of cards in this. Everything's laid out. There is this lineup here. This is pretty much, if you're on your home planet, you can exchange cards from your hand for cards in here. But everything else is in an envelope. So usually about mid to the late game, you're gonna know or have seen generally where all the cards are. There's no randomness in terms of hoping to draw a card. Right, yeah, it's very, it's very interesting because it's really all about what you've seen, what the players know. At the start of the game, you know very little. And like you said, the longer you go, the more information that you get. So it kind of becomes, it, it can be a deduction game very heavily, but then also there's obviously the combat aspect to it. Uh, and a lot of these cards are very, uh, very different and work in interesting ways. There's the temporal displacement which actually advances the clock a certain number of spaces. So if you have the ovoid, you think you're in a good place, you know where it is, you might want to advance the clock so the game ends quicker so that you can win. Uh, there's also bases that you can add to the game. So you add this little guy, and those will protect a planet. So even if you're not there, someone goes there, they still have to fight the base uh, via you and the cards in that planet's envelope uh, against this. So you kind of have an automated defense system in a way. Either way, you will be playing these mind games and searching. Each time a term ends, you're gonna see and click this clock, and then as soon as it hits zero, the game ends. Now, whoever's holding, and I repeat, holding the Ovoid is the winner. If you've put it in your home planet, but you're not holding it, doesn't count, you don't have it, you're not the winner. It's possible no one is the winner. If nobody has it, then that's it. The universe just ends and <laughs> you're out of luck. Uh, also, of course, everybody has their own unique powers. Of course. So, like this guy has the ability to look at other decks. Um, you know, some, some of them have abilities where they can travel differently to different planets. Uh, those can also, of course, really change the game. Right. I mean, the red player, his power is actually he wins if no one wins. <laughs> He's sort of this very nihilistic character that wants everyone to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some, there's some really interesting stuff there. Uh, I think the like the heart of what makes the part of what makes the game so fun for me at least uh, is just the tactile sense of there's a lot of games with hidden information but in this one you know it's actually in an envelope it's a, the only other game I can think of to compare it to is Sheriff of Nottingham it's kind of a similar thing where there's something so fun to me of like opening something up and it's all it's like opening a present it's, and you have this your own secret little pile here to look at and you feel very powerful with that knowledge sometimes there's different variants there's Oh, yeah. A dark ovoid, so there's actually two ovoids, and you have to find out which one's the real one. Yeah, that is that's awesome. <laughs> that's a really good one. <laughs> of course, if you can guess, the board is modular, so you can change the board to how you please. Yeah, you can put these over there. Can you, the, some some modes you could have this clock like in the middle, and you can pass through that to travel through it. And the big thing, though, in the end, like you mentioned, combat that, but the mechanic of I guess, what do you say? It's like king of the hill, except the hill moves. <laughs> right. The it's, fact it's... you're hunting for this ovoid, and there's this whole, like we had some crazy games where someone dropped the ovoid just to try to trick people and fooled most of the people, and someone's like, oh, search that point for fun. And it was there, and just, it makes moments at the table I don't think I've ever have seen in other games. Yeah, I definitely, I mean, com, don't get me wrong, combat is very important in this game, and you'll have an advantage you have if you have good combat cards. That is definitely true. But I do not, I don't feel in this one as much of some other games that that's the be all end all. It doesn't feel like, if I mean, if you lose in combat, it could be really bad, but, um, th there's usually, I think, a way out, and what's more important is information. What's What really gives you the advantage is knowing where cards are, which of course would probably lead to you having a better hand because you know where to get them from. Uh, but still, I, I like that aspect of it, that it's not just about fighting each other, it's, it's about knowing when to fight each other and how to fight each other. <laughs> That's true, but sometimes, and this is where I think a, a few little cracks for me show up, you could be like, I know the information, but I can't do anything about it because I don't have the common cards. It's very rare because usually they're spread out enough, but 
using higher player counts because more people are searching the board quicker to gather up those cards, you may have some issues with where you can't do anything about it. My cracks start to show for me a little bit is I do feel that depending on how the game goes, once you know where the Ovoid is, there usually comes a point where most players kind of know where it is and have an idea of it. And it isn't quite as thrilling or exciting as like the first half of the game when a lot of people are in the dark, maybe everyone's in the dark. For, maybe that's more of a personal thing. I kind of like that thrill of the chase. And then once it can turn into a little bit of just a, well, he has it, so it's just who gets that last attack or what have it's you. That I think also depending on how your players play in the end because mm -hmm. there was one game, it was beautiful at the end because it, someone decided to do like a Hail Mary. <laughs> and because of that, it changed up everything and everyone didn't, it turned it right back to that mystery in the beginning. Right, right, right. So it really requires, if people start playing a little bit more recklessly, this game becomes a lot more fun. It's definitely player dependent. Uh, you know, you might have someone who, maybe they're lying. Maybe someone might say, oh, I, I know where the Ovoid is, guys. I saw it over here, or and you don't know, or oh, that, that player has it. Maybe you might say that just because you want other players to attack them <laughs> as a bluff. Like, there's all kinds of games you can play if you want to. And like we said, with those variants and everything, there's a lot of stuff that can happen, and those those moments, for me, those moments are just so valuable and exciting that I don't think any other game has really replicated in the same way. Here are our crits and misses for Chaosmos. Starting with crits. The conceit of the game, The Hunt for the Ovoid, is totally unique. It provides a very distinct end game goal for all players that is fun and thrilling and doesn't feel like any other game out there. Because no player has a perfect level of information, you're always a little bit in the dark trying to discover new things. Getting to a new planet and opening those envelopes is really thrilling and suspenseful. It's also really fun when someone opens up an envelope with a trap you put in it. Combat is exciting, but not the be-all, end-all of the game. Usually there's a way for you to find a way to counteract someone's cards, or to find the Ovoid and get away with it even if you're losing. Misses. As the game progresses, more and more information will be learned by all the players, such that by the mid and end game, really, usually people have a general idea of what's going on, and it can lose that charm of discovery that I had in the beginning. Your mileage may vary on this one, but I know that personally, I found the joy of those earlier turns a little bit more worthwhile than the end game. All cards are distributed right at the beginning of the game. There's no deck to draw from later. And this can be a little bit of an issue if your own plan in hand just really didn't have any combat cards. It can feel really annoying if you have no way to deal with other players, especially when everyone else has already gathered up all the combat cards before you had a chance. There are some safeguards in place, so this shouldn't happen to you too often, but it is something to keep an eye out for, especially for newer players who may not be as familiar with all the different counters and types of cards that they should be hunting for. Like the Ovoid, this is feels like a one-of-a-kind game. I mean, the mechanics, just the player interaction, thinking how to control the Ovoid and drop it, who might have it. The myths that we mentioned about that, not having any combat cards. I was the one who had that experience, and I felt really bad because I didn't, felt like I couldn't do anything. But in that game, someone threw, just decided to do some weird things, and what turned out is the player who you'd expect should dominate this game. The guy who can, like, track every bit of information, you know, think 20 turns ahead. We just threw him through a loop and seeing the look on his face no other game has been able to do that for us <laughs> yeah yeah just the sheer shock on his face of he had never knew where anything was stuff like that it's definitely not a perfect game there are some rough edges but it, for almost part of that for me almost is some of the charm of it honestly this feels like a game that just so much of it is exactly what I love in games I'm a big sucker for deduction games I always love hit and roll kind of stuff probably because it was on Kickstarter you know it, it didn't have a, a huge marketing or following after that. It was early days of Kickstarter, like we said. It's very unique. I think maybe because it didn't really take off, we haven't seen a lot of copycats, uh, but I think it's deserving of copycats. Now that we've published this video, you're, this is the next roll and write wave. <laughs> the Ovoid wave. Absolutely recommend you pick this one up. If, if you have ever liked really that deduction aspect, if that sounds cool to you, that's the reason you want to check this scheme out. I would say even more than deduction. If you like social games, this will be such a new twist you're not expecting. It's not the hidden roles of like, all right, who's the spy? It's, you could, I know who you are, but I don't know what you've been doing. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, you know, usually we uh, we review just the new hotness for the most part 
it on our channel. But once in a while, it's nice to go back and look at an older favorite, one that maybe is deserving of more attention. So if you had the chance to play Chaosmos or you're looking at the new Kickstarter that's coming up, please let us know what your thoughts are, uh, which cards you like, what strategies you like. If you have your own very funny stories about the Ovoid and mm -hmm. the, the crazy shenanigans you've played with it. <laughs> let us know what you'd do with the Ovoid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, do you, in real life, how would you create our world anew? <laughs> or a universe, what have you. Until we see that new universe, I'm Will. I'm Jonathan. This has been Roll for Crit. Catch the latest from Roll for Crit by liking and subscribing, and don't forget to support us on Patreon. Don't get analysis paralysis. Just click those buttons. Help us out.